Hello everyone, my name is Xin Jieling and I am a student from the Institute of Information Engineering, Chinese Academic of Sciences. Next, I will give a presentation on our research, a contextualized datagram representation with pre-training transformers for encrypted traffic classification. According to the Google Transparency Report, Global encrypted traffic has reached over 90% in November 2021. Encrypted communications use encryption to protect users from malicious spying, but quantity of services and network threat detection face challenges. Encrypted traffic identification, a solution for this issue, which can identify that application services a user has visited using fingerprint features such as packet size. We demonstrate the technology in three phases. In the training phase, enough labeled data is used to train and build fingerprint knowledge. In most cases, the knowledge is a trained machine learning or deep learning model. In the test phase, the trained model is used to detect the targets in the untrained traffic to evaluate the performance. Finally, the model is applied to detect the traffic online and identify the target's services. In view of encrypted traffic identification, there are four major existing related research. The first is fingerprint rules. This approach usually relies on plain text content and as per knowledge for fingerprint construction. The second is the statistical fingerprinting. This method still has a reliance on expert knowledge, but uses statistical features of external behavior. The third is raw fingerprint features. The methods use a supervised learning model to automatically categorize the raw features. The last is the representation of raw traffic using unsupervised learning, which is still in the exploration phase. The approach does not rely on large-scale labeled data and greatly reduced the data dependency. Overall, in the face of encryption protocol evolution and trafficked data growth, existing research is gradually reducing the reliance on labeled data as well as manual intervention. However, existing works still face practical challenges. For example, the latest version of the TLS encrypts the certificate payload, and the SNI mechanism makes Rascal labeling efforts difficult. In addition, most existing approaches rely on large amounts of labeled training data, which is prone to model bias and hard to adapt to new scenarios. In reality, the combination of different models is often the chosen solution, but this does not drive the problem. Then a question arises whether it's possible to build a general model for multi-scene identification. To solve this issue, we analyze the existing problems. First, all these mentioned methods require artificial feature engineering or large-scale labeled training data, which are limited for a generalization ability. Secondly, the selection of sequence features is only applicable to a specific scenario while losing the rest of the potential information. In fact, encrypted traffic in different scenarios follows the same underlying network architecture, and existing measures gradually focus on the external features of the traffic rather than the encrypted content. Based on this potential common knowledge, the goal of our research is to construct a general model without feature engineering without large amount of labeled data, and most importantly, which has a good generalization and transferability. This is our model framework, which is a pre-training and fine-tuning architecture. From left to right, there are three modules. The first one is a data pre-processing module, which pre-process traffic datagrams and encodes them to generate the fundamental data representation. The second module is a pre-training network, 
which makes an embedded representation of the decagram and learns the contextual information with different pre-training tasks. Finally, the third module is the network structure fine-tuning, which is able to train and implement target identification using a small amount of labeled data from different scenarios. Next, I will explain the framework in detail. At first, we obtain the session sequence from the raw traffic traces, then extract the packet datagrams and divide them into separate burst blocks by direction information. We extract the datagram with all the headers, bias information, such as MAC, IP, and port. We feed each burst to the bigram encoder and construct the datagram representation by constructing byte pairs of tokens. Finally, we divide each burst into two blocks as the basic traffic representation. Next, we perform embedding representation and pre-chaining of burst. In fact, burst is a traffic block composed of packets with the same communication content for a short a period of time and it has deep correlation during transmission. And the embedding process is to represent the tokens, positions, and same orange information in burst as in depend dependent vectors of the same dimension respectively. We want to explore the contextual relationships within burst and are not limited to any specific case traffic. Therefore, we choose transformer to calculate the attentional associations between each token and others. Then we use the mask burst model and same orange burst prediction as self unsupervised learning task. In the mask burst model, we build contextual association knowledge by randomly masking some tokens and predicting them by others. In the same orange burst prediction, we distinguished whether there is a pair of sub burst blocks from the same transmission block to obtain the same orange knowledge. During the fine tuning stage, we will transfer and apply the pre chained model to different scenarios. We pre process the labeled traffic and use packs level and flow level samples as different inputs to test the effectiveness of the model. The next is about model evolution. To verify the effectiveness of our model, we need to answer some questions. Can the model deal with the new security protocol? Can the model keep stable performance under various scenarios? Is the performance slippage of the model in unbalanced and few short scenarios? How well does the self-supervised task and burst structure play their roles? And then, we perform evolution in seven different scenarios with 11 comparison methods to answer these questions. The seven scenarios come from five different datasets, four of which are public available, and one of which is the TLS 1.3 dataset we collected. The GAC task is implemented under the cross-platform dataset, which contains unbalanced iOS and Android application traffic. The ETCV task is implemented under the VPN dataset, which contains VPN application and service traffic. The EACT task is implemented under the Tor dataset, which contains anonymous network traffic. The EMC task is implemented under the malicious traffic dataset and contains both normal and malware traffic. And the EAC 1.3 task is implemented under the TOS 1.3 dataset. Experiments have showed that our model achieves the best results on all scenarios. First, we validate on three scenarios, including Tor, VPN, and TOS 1.3. The Tor scenario contains 16 applications, 8 of which use a numerous communication protocol. The VPN scenario contains 17 applications, 8 of which use the tuning network protocol. These two scenarios are public datasets, and due to the lack of public dataset for TOS 1.3, we created 120 applications 
using QoS 1.3 as the third scenario. The methods mentioned in the related work are difficult to adapt to these scenarios because of the lost or biased data information. For example, Floorprint has high accuracy but low recall in the Tor and VPN scenarios since it relies on plain test certificates. Statistical fingerprinting methods such as APP scanner and byte construct statistical features based on sequence such as packet size that are clearly not generalizable. Next, we further test it on four new scenarios. The cross-platform dataset has a significant unbalanced distribution, where the iOS scenario contains 196 applications, and the Android scenario contains 215 applications. The second VPN scenario contains 12 behaviors, such as email, videos, and others. And the malicious scenario contains 20 applications, 10 of which are malwares. The results of the experiments show that generic traffic representation learned by our model performs well in different imbalanced scenarios and achieves surprising results in two other scenarios as well. To verify the effectiveness of the model design, we perform ablation analysis on the model. The results show that the model design helps significantly in traffic recognition results improvement, especially for the pre-training network. In the fine-tuning phase, packed level as input is more suitable for traffic recognition. The reason is that flow-level data introduce adversary information such as Tor and VPN will change the behavioral performance of the original flow. This is also a shortcoming of our model. In addition, we compare the fluctuation of the model's effort in few short scenario. We divide the number of samples in the VPN scenario into four different ratios the smallest of which is 10% of the total samples. The results show our model maintains a more stable performance than other methods when the ratio of the samples decreases. Furthermore, we show the representation of the classified samples by different methods using TSNE. The result shows that our model distinguished well between different categories. Although our model presents exciting results, we still want to explore its interpretive ability. We verified the substitutes used in all datasets using randomness tests. However, this only shows some distinguished ability between traffic with different substitutes applied. Obviously, the distinguished ability between encrypted payloads does not fully resolve the doubts. Depending on the datagram we used, the TCP fields and SSL fields become critical information. We assume that these fields contain the network behavior impact transmission, which is distinguishable. However, we are not aware of much, too much research on this. Therefore, we believe it's worth to continue exploring and verifying. In addition, application version updates and content changes will introduce the problem of feature drift, which usually makes the trained model invalid. Meanwhile, pre-trained model face the threat of attacks such as noisy data poisoning. These problems have not been solved yet, so we believe that stable and general encrypted draft identification technology needs further research. In conclusion, we propose a generic pre-training model for encrypted traffic classification to solve the problem of multi-scene identification. The model runs generic traffic representations from unlabeled traffic using pre-training and effectively transfers to downstream tasks. Experiments show that the proposed model performs well in different scenarios including Tor, VPN, TOS 1.3, unbalanced traffic, and mail wells. Meanwhile, we verified that different modules of the model are beneficial to improve the performance. We have released 
the code for this research and welcome you to test and improve it. That's all. Thank you. Okay, uh, so let's thank uh, Sinye for the talk. And I can see that Sinye is actually online. And uh, we have one question. So uh, the, um, the author of the question has posted it in the chat, but uh, they have also mentioned that they can come uh, unmute themselves and ask the question. So I invite them to unmute. And uh, if Sinye can like uh, unmute uh, him, uh, that would be great. So that we know that yeah. I can take the question. Yeah, I I am muted. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for your presentation. Yeah, I have a, I have put a question into the chat box, um, because I'm new to the fine tuning, so I'm very curious about the fine tuning operations in the page six of the slides. Mm, oh yeah, could you please explain that um, how the fine tune task reaches very bad very good performance on different. Uh, scenarios. It seems that the classification scenarios shown in the slides are quite different, such as the VPN, the uh, apps classification. And could you please explain which part of your model is fine-tuned and how this model can reach the good fine-tuned performance for various scenarios? That is my question. I can see that the senior no, has I, unmuted. I got it. It's a uh, good yeah. scenario. It depends on the pre-chain model. And uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear clearly. Uh, okay. And and um, the the model. Uh, which which part you ask which part of the model to fine tune, and um, is a. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the main the main performance of the model is of the pre-chained and in the fine tuning phase, um, we just change the input and the classifier uh, layer, and uh, the main model of the pre-chained is not changed, and which is the uh, which is the main key to to contain to contain the performance to uh, to to performance well in different uh, uh, to very well different in different scenarios, and if this is uh, if this can't uh explain well, and you you can send email to me, and I will uh give it in the chat, and I can I can I can give you more explanation. Okay. 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 Got it. Okay. I will, I will contact you by email. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, thank you for the hello, question. Hello, Xinjie. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, yes. Thank you for your presentation. I want to ask a few questions. We can see the result of your work are excellent, but I would like to know, can the model be assured to work if deployed in the real network? Or uh, if it worked in the real network, when does the model need to be updated updated and will it always be valid thank you uh, uh okay okay i got it uh, uh it's a good uh there are two questions yeah and for the first question uh uh the real network environment you mentioned uh i think it may have two meanings and uh, the one is the identification of real network data and uh and the other may uh is the identification of traffic in real time. Uh, and for the first case, uh, the data sets we, we use in different scenarios of experiments uh, in our research uh, contain traffic from real networks such as um, TLS 1.3 and, and uh, iOS and Android data traffic. And uh, for the second case, uh, we cannot uh, be sure of the performance because they are not uh, relevant tests yet. And uh, if we have uh, make the experiments, we will uh, I welcome you to uh, send email to us and we can uh, uh, complicate for more about this. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the second question uh, 
it's about the uh, updated uh, when when is to update it, the model to shoot for the different uh, scenarios and um, the traffic classification models uh, as we know are usually updated in new data environments and thus they can maintain their performance uh, since our model uses fine tuning for scene adaption the cost of updating the model is uh, relative to role. Uh, and we are also focus, focusing on the solution to the rival drift problem caused by uh, different application version update or the content update. Uh, and and that's, that's all. Uh, I hope it can uh, help you. And if you have other questions, uh, you can send email to me. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you for your answer.